Hello and welcome to BitBoy Crypto. I'm your host as always, BitBoy. Today, we're going to be doing another episode of the Complete Idiot's Guide to Crypto, where we break down some of the really simple things about cryptocurrency that maybe a lot of people take for granted, but maybe you don't know about. So today, we're actually going to be talking about how to protect yourself in crypto. This is not going to be a completely comprehensive list, but I'm going to give you four rules that you need to go by, and this will help you to keep your crypto safe. Of course, there are plenty of other rules or plenty of other tips people can give you in regards to keeping your crypto safe, but I'm going to give you four tonight that I think will be key rules for you to follow in order to keep your crypto safe. So if you're not a member of the Bit Squad, that's the way to be safe. Just join the Bit Squad. We'll help you out. All you got to do is click that subscribe button and the bell for notifications. And if you do, we are actually giving away $150 in Bitcoin at the end of the month, along with two shirts from my merch store. And that's actually not a scam. That's legit. So, okay, guys, let's talk about these four rules. But before we do, it's important I think you understand why is crypto such an easy target for scammers? Well, anytime you're on the cutting edge of technology, there is kind of a gap in understanding. There's always going to be a gap because everything is so new. Things change every single day with crypto. Like, for instance, uh, NEO is a crypto project, and on their website it says NEO cannot fork. It, it's not a traditional blockchain. It can't fork. And then somehow Neo forked. So like this technology, we're finding new stuff out about every day. And so who is on the cutting edge? Well, usually hackers are really on the cutting edge of especially internet type technology, if that makes sense. So the scammers are always kind of a step ahead and they get more and more sophisticated all the time. So because of this lack in understanding, even from a lot of people who I know, including myself, who have been a victim of a hacking or a phishing scam, that it's very easy to get tricked. So it's important that you stick to these four rules. So number one, we have if it's too good to be true, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. If you watch one of my videos from a couple months ago, I actually got fished, hacked, whatever you want to call it. It's basically I got fished. I voluntarily, unknowingly handed over some information to someone, which I'll talk about in a second with rule number two, how I could, or uh, I'm sorry, with rule number four, how I could have avoided this. But the long and the short of it is I voluntarily handed my key or my information over to someone and, you know, it, it was for $500 of an airdrop. I thought I was getting $500 of a token that turned out didn't even exist. I felt like a total idiot. I just started kind of getting into airdrops, which is supposedly free money, but I caution you with airdrops. There's a lot of those out there that are scams, and you kind of have to weigh out, is it worth it for you for maybe $10 of a token or $20 of a token to maybe open yourself up to getting scammed or hacked or fished? So that's a question you have to ask yourself. And then you go a little bit further with this, and we see these ETH giveaways on Twitter. Now, they've really died down a lot. Twitter has actually done a lot to try to combat the bots, but basically, if someone says, hey, send me one ETH and I will send you 10 back, that's Ethereum, if you did not know. If someone says, send me one Ethereum and I'll send you 10 back, does that sound logical? No, absolutely not. There's no guarantees in crypto. you got to always keep that in mind. And so once you hand over crypto to someone, they have no obligation to give you anything back. And that's why it's really important that you know people that you're dealing with and you trust them. But as long as you just remember that, if it sounds too good to be true, if they're promising you guaranteed returns, if they're promising you a deal that doesn't really make sense, if they're promising you something that is out of the range of what is normal, then it's probably a scam. Stay away. Rule number two, and to me, this is the biggest one right now. This is where people are getting very sophisticated. I'm going to give you some tips. Number two is be careful of impersonators. Well, on Twitter, for instance, with the Ethereum giveaways that people were faking, somehow people had actually figured out how to get a blue check mark next to their name. So you might have someone that is big in the space, such as Vitalik Buterin, and then you would have a scammer that would make a comment on one of his posts that would change his name and picture to also look like Vitalik Buterin's. But somehow they had even figured out a way to get the blue verified check mark. So the impersonators are very, very, very good. Now, this is where I'm seeing this the most. 
Okay, I want to use my, my friend Crypto Crow, Jason Appleton. You guys may know him from his channel. He's one of my good friends. And basically, I know his personal Telegram name. I know what it is because I'm in a Telegram group with him. I know him. Okay, but if you go to Telegram and you type in Crypto Crow, there are at least four impersonator accounts that come up. And it won't be long before anyone who has a Telegram group that's an influencer has impersonators. And now think about this situation. If you are in a Telegram group, I'll just use mine for instance. Mine is pretty small. We have about 100 people. We'd love for you to join. You can click below to join our Telegram group. But in our Telegram group, I'm actively engaging with pretty much everyone who chats in the group. So now if someone wants to impersonate me, then all they could do is get something that's a similar name to mine, that's not my exact name, like something like BitBoy Official, which is not my name. If you see BitBoy Official, it's not me. But if you had a name like BitBoy Official, and then you go into the Telegram group and you start messaging people individually, it's going to be pretty easy to trick people because especially if you have the same icon, then it's going to be like, hey, this is BitBoy. But here's the thing. Uh, scammers usually use language that doesn't sound like the person. Someone had a fake email address they were using to pretend to be me. And I'm not sure, I th they may have been reaching out to projects. They were certainly reaching out to individuals from my Telegram chat, but it didn't sound like me. They were saying things like, kind regards, cheers. They might as well have said cool beans. These are things I would never say, guys, never. If I don't say bro or dude or bud, then it's probably not me. But this, these impersonators are getting very aggressive. And so you just have to be careful. And, and why is this important? Because often what is happening is these people who are impersonating, they are coming to people and asking them for crypto. It would be like, I don't know, it reminds me of like my poor family. It would be like if I messaged you and was like, oh, listen, random person that I barely know on the internet. Oh, you follow me. That's great. Hey, can I borrow a couple bitcoins? No, that doesn't sound legit, but yet that's what these impersonators are doing. And I actually have a good friend of mine who I won't say by name, but you guys may know who actually was tricked. Now, he didn't actually give over crypto, but he actually thought he was being contacted by an influencer, a big influencer. And I saw this and I was like, uh, no, that's not actually that person. I see it all the time. 99% of the time, if or 99.99% of the time, if you get contacted directly by a big influencer, a big name, someone claiming to be behind a project, it's going to be false. They're going to be impersonating, and they're always going to be trying to get something from you. But I've seen very intelligent people tricked by this, so please be careful. Verify. If someone is contacting you as a big influencer, go to their website, because if they're a big influencer, they'll have one, and or at least a LinkedIn page, and you can get their actual Telegram username. And from there, you can be able to match it up to see whether or not that's actually the person or not, because chances are it's not. So, okay, guys, rule number three, and this is just kind of a no-brainer. Don't ever give anyone your private key. If you give someone your private key, you are handing over your account. So you can give your public key, and this is important for beginners to understand the difference between a public key and a private key. Your public key is your address that tells people where to send crypto to. Your private key is the longer encrypted number that is what you use to get into your account. So once you hand that private key over, whatever wallet or whatever you are using, um, whatever address that is, that's dead. It, the hacker has it at that point. So do not ever give your private key. Now, I was hit with a sophisticated scam, and I, I didn't realize I was handing over my private key. I, I basically had to give someone what was called a signature from my Ether wallet, I didn't realize like somehow even with that, even though it wasn't a private key, then I was still handing them over access to my account. So be very careful if you ever see the word signature, stay away from that. So do you guys just remember that? A, a normal place is never going to ask for that from you. So, okay, guys, rule number four, and this is the one that got me, guys. This is the one that got me. Never click a link. Always go directly to the site you're trying to go to. So what happened with me with an airdrop just to summarize it, I know a lot of you guys know, is I got involved in this airdrop. It was a $500, it was called EOS Gas. And I went to, um, I signed up for it. They had a set amount of days. On the day it was, the airdrop was supposedly over and they were supposed to be dispersing tokens. They sent me an email with a link to my Ether wallet. And it was early in the morning. It was first thing. I was, I was on the phone. I was doing something, wasn't even paying attention. I was just like, oh yeah, I'll click it and go to it. Well, when I clicked that link, it went to 
a fake my ether wallet site it was not the legit site and even from there i still had to go in and give them a signature to my ether wallet so it, this is a good rule i learned this one from my friend crypto beetles really it, he's the one who gave me this language never click a link if you get a link in a website or in an email if it's to any if it's coinbase binance whatever it is always go to your browser and manually type it in do not click that link because sometimes they can even spoof, they can even spoof uh, an address and it looks right, but then you click on it and it goes to what's called a spoof website. So make sure you don't click a link. Now, those are four rules that you can stick by to stay safe in crypto. There are others, there, this is a complicated world we're dealing with, like I said, we're on the cutting edge of this technology. And so you just gotta think through things, slow down a little bit, think about things. If it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. If someone's giving you a guarantee in crypto, whether even if it's on a project and they're saying guaranteed returns on investment, let me tell you, there's no such thing as a guarantee in crypto. That's a promise from your boy, BitBoy. So, all right, guys, thank you so much for watching today's episode of your the total or the complete idiot's guide to crypto. I'm gonna need the total idiot's guide to speaking because I keep calling it the wrong thing. But uh, the complete idiot's guide to crypto today, we looked at four rules to keep you safe from hackers. You guys submit some content or some questions or some comments below in uh, in the comment section. Let me know some things you would like for me to talk about. Um, we're going to be going over Binance probably next week and some things like that. So everybody, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, BitBoy out.